Welcome to another Wargame review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at not a new game per se, but new-ish in the last couple of years. This is, uh, it's Commands and Colors Tricorn, and this is the American Revolution is the subtitle. Yes. So, Commands and Colors games designed by Richard Borg. This particular one was put out by Compass Games. I want to say it was 2017. 17? Maybe it was 18. It ran on a Kickstarter and then it came out. If, and it now has an expansion. Later. Yeah, so they got, and they're making the more in that line as well, in the Tricorn the line. Jacobite too. Uprising or yes. whatever it is. So, Commands and Colors game, a lot of you are very familiar with that system. It's a, a card based system. I play my card and that tells me which units and in which section of the board I can order them. Yeah. Moving and fighting, chucking a bunch of dice. So, it's a very light war game. It's an introductory style war game, but it has a great um, historical theme in it. So these yeah. kind of games are good ways to kind of, you know, introduce people to war gaming <clears throat> and a bit more kind of tactical situations and bits and pieces, mm -hmm. as well as a good educational tool as well. Uh, we play a and, lot and, of these, right? Yeah, and they're fun. Yes. I mean, I, I will be honest, almost every time we play these games, I think they're fun. Yeah, it's rare that I play one where I'm like, Oh, that was boring. Or oh, like this yeah. scenario was like, that was kind of a dud. That's rare that that happens. This one felt very much longer. Yes. And and I know, to me, when you play Tricorn, tri or Colors, Commands and Colors, you want like an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. This one, I think it took us three hours, but we also did some rules wrong at the very beginning. Yeah, and this was new. But, and, and we were reading the cards and trying to understand some of the different strategies and, and discussing. But the pace of this game is overall slower. I've heard Definitely. other people say that, they're like, a game takes longer than your average one. Like, yeah. I swear, the first time I played Benmar 44, it was 40 minutes aside. We played it twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this one, we twice as long. Well, and, and, and I think that length, additional length, is really related to the style of fighting in this period. Yes. It was very maneuver-oriented. It's that Napoleonic style... Maneuver oriented, keeping your battle lines, and then firing a volley, and and that's that, and then going back and forth. You that's know? why this one takes longer. Yeah, because the dice that you roll terrible, are fairly pathetic at times. Not as bad as the archers in medieval. ancients or medieval, yeah, was... but still, you're rolling two dice more often than not. If you have a leader attached. Yeah. Three, it can be three dice. Really, it's anywhere from one to three. Yeah. Usually it's one or two, depending on how much you've moved and, and different situations. So you're very rarely going to do two or three hits. It's more often than not going to be one hit. Or no And hits. maybe a retreat or no hits. A lot of no hits. Um, and that's that's why the game yeah. takes longer. Yeah. We played through the whole deck of command cards and yeah. then a bit more as well. And typically, we don't do that. Normal. No, and that's we're also fairly aggressive well, be, in these games as well. <laughs> well, true, but a lot of the other games that we've played, it's maybe three or four of the battle flags, which are your victory, right? Yeah. For eliminating a unit, sometimes eliminating a leader, you get one of these little battle flags, or or it's like six, but a couple of those are victory point hexes, you know? Right. So if you keep that, stuff. you get a point. This one, it was like there were seven. The the victory condition was seven battle flags, and you only got battle flags from. Eliminating formations and or sometimes killing killing leaders. So it just it was slower. That that's just and there were seven and, of them. Seven's a lot. Part of that is this scenario where it is just yeah. about killing. Other ones there's some objectives. Hold some it, objectives. Pieces, but, but some of those are ten battle flags, think, right? Yes. Ten and nine. Yeah. Some of these have got some big scenarios in it. We played one of the kind of middle ones. There were a couple that were five. Yeah. But what once again, this is evocative of that period of time. Yes. Musket fire. From 60 yards, you're not going to hit a whole lot. No. You, you know. Not effectively. And, and then you kind of move an inch your way up, hoping to get in striking distance for a bayonet charge, which that was really cool. I liked that element cool. of it. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just a little different style of game. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. The, the, the thing we were talking about is, is something that's new in this one. How you just kind of sit there and pepper each other, it can take a long time. Yeah. They've tried to offset that with a new rallying and morale-based mm -hmm. mechanic. Which is brutal, yes. frankly. So <laughs> it's very... Shouldn't be, because... But <laughs> it's very interesting. It really happens quite often. So in this one, normally in these games, you get a couple flags, you retreat, right? Yeah. In this one, you retreat, and then you have to make a rally check. 
where you're going to roll a number of dice based effectively on how many blocks you have left. And or whether or not you have a, a leader. A leader, or if you're an elite unit, or if you're yeah. a crappy provincial or militia. So that might be modified up or down. But, you know, if you've been shot half, you know, you got two blocks left. You're going to roll, you're two, gonna roll dice, two dice. And you have to roll a flag. Yeah. Or you... You are routed off the board. Yeah, you, you, you retire. You break, you're just taken off the board, and that's a flag to the opponent. So instead of sitting here trying to kill each other to death, you're try, you are doing that, but yeah. getting the flags in this one can be much better as a result sometimes, because mm-hmm. I'm like forcing you to keep making these rally checks, and at some point yeah. you're going to fail one of them, and it does not feel good. Well, and, and that was also a very interesting part of it as well, because the different units have different modifiers. Yes. I found myself scanning the battlefield, looking for your provincials. Did you have militia? I had. I did. They, were, they, were, they, they no, never, never came into the battle. I'm not gonna the, do. the provincial, I think they had negative one dice or yep. die yep. to their roll. So if they had two units or three units, they're only rolling two dice. So I found myself kind of scanning the battlefield and not just looking for that one or two units to finish you off to get a battle flag, but trying to get guys like that to break. You did a good job. You assigned your leader to yep. them, which helped them. I think I did that as well. Here, my militia had uh, uh, the traitor, Benedict Arnold, attached. So that was an interesting, just another element that they added to the game. And what I liked about that, what you talked about, is it made you look at the line and mm-hmm. find the weak spots. Yep. And it's more than just, well, that, that stack only has two blocks left. Yeah. You're like, well, sure. But, but is, it, is it more hardier, likely to roll a flag or two against this weak stack and than eliminate mm-hmm. this stack? And that's exactly what happened. And, and, and that prevents you, provides you with some really cool tactical yeah. choices yeah. and something to just actually have to think about. Well, and, and in the American Revolutionary War, we've all seen the movie The Patriot, right? You know, you, you've I'll seen honest, that movie. I've never yeah, well, it. <laughs> don't, don't worry. It's not great. It's okay. Um, <laughs> you know, the British were scanning the battlefield looking for where the militia were formed up and and you know Mel Gibson's character used the militia in the center one time to kind of deke them you, you know and they attacked there and they broke intentionally but but that's kind of what happened you kind of looked for where the usually militia were on the wings or in the back in reserve but th- that was a very neat part of this yes. design an element that they added because they always do that like you said yep. they add interesting elements to make it thematic and really change the game up. They don't just reskin these things, throw a new name on it, and you end up playing the same game. Every one of these feels different. Yes. I think so. I mean, we've played oh. Ancients that I think feels very, very different. Yeah. Love those elephants. By the way, can, were there elephants in this? No, but... Okay, but we could put them in there, right? We talked about that. We need, Anyway, just... <laughs> but, but, you know, the Ancients were very felt very different. That CNC Medieval felt very, very different. Even the ancients, when you add in some of the Roman expansions, feel very different. And then we've played what are the Napoleonic? Napoleonic very which, different. Very different. Plus, there's fifteen hundred expansions for that one that yes. all are different. And that's a bit more on the crunchy side for yes. these games, at least. Yeah. Because all the units, similar to this one, all the units have a bunch of different statistics yeah. on them. That one is just a lot more. I, I think they all have at least some differences in those. But man, the Napoleonics is like every single nation has different. Every single nation has every single different yeah, unit. Yeah, which is very cool because it makes it, it really makes it fun. But something like Mammoth Boy Forest is, I've got tanks, yeah. you've got tanks. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> so this, this I felt like was a little bit on the deeper side of yes. the scale. Not quite as complex and deep as Napoleonics, but definitely had a little bit more. Yeah, I would put it, I would kind it. of group those together though. Yeah. But. But that still shouldn't scare anyone off no, from buying this. Heck no. And, and actually, I like this period. So yes, this I'm, is one that I'm very glad we have. Yep. Um, we bought it kind of, I think we bought it at uh, WBC. Yes. Where, last you, where, year? I, yeah, it was the last time we were there. And so we got it all, we, we got it like 30% WBC, off. WBC, you should go there because yeah, Compass has everything like, like 30, 30 or 40% pre, yeah, off. Oh, pretty nice. Bargain time. Um, and this is usually a eighty dollar game it's at least because there's a lot of blocks. Much more than that. Yeah, hundred dollars. Yep. But so, so we talked about the difference in the rally mechanic. They also had these really cool combat cards. Yes, which I we were really having a fun time yeah. with those. They are asymmetric, meaning I have my own little. As the Patriots, I had my own little blue deck. Yep. I think they had similar stuff, but then there were some differences like. One of my cards was a sharpshooter. 
So yeah. I was able to kind of target a, a that. leader and identify that leader and have yeah, a no, chance to remove him. So that was a little different. I think some of your you did, had a did you have, did you have training? I did not. See, yeah, mine are like which very is cool. Disciplined when they move, they don't lose dice, which is things like that. So during that turn, that is very powerful because you could move into position and fire all your dice. Yeah. You also had one that allowed a strike back, not on a melee attack, but a ranged attack. Yeah, that was ambush. Like volley fire, it was return, return fire. fire. Just shoot you back. I didn't have a card like that, so these were really cool. You started with how many of these? Uh, in the scenario we Three. played, we had four. four. And then certain of these cards, when you play them, they say draw a combat card or two. Or some of the command some cards. Some of the command cards. I need to draw more. Yeah. But like, I, I think the fewest I had was two, and the most I had was like six. I think I ended up with six. And anywhere they were... between that. So you always have a decent sized yeah. hand of like just extra bits that you yep. can do that helps to break away from the you know, handcuffs of your command cards at times. Right. You know, you might only have your you know, hand of just stuff on the left. But like, yeah. well, I've got an inspirational leader who can mm -hmm. do one thing at least over here. Yeah. It just it just adds more stuff well, to and, do. It's fun. And it adds some tactical element to it. It's like you're going to hoard those cards, hoping to unleash them at the right time. Yeah. And which is it, right up my alley. You yeah, know, that's you how love I, that That's kind of, how I am. I, I kept, every time I kept waiting, is this going to happen? <laughs> but that, that was cool because you could plan, oh, I'm going to... Like, I had that bayonet charge over here, and I ended up moving a ton of spaces and getting up in your face, which was very powerful. So I really liked those combat cards. Um, the medieval one from GMT that came out this last year, it didn't have the cards, but they had different abilities those with inspirational the inspiration actions. tokens. Yeah, was kind of... Not as varied, but it was a similar uh, similar mechanic. Yeah, I you think, could spend those things to do to a do series cool of actions yeah. on a menu. So, so I like that. I think that's a very cool addition. The other thing they added to this, there was a new type of terrain, a redoubt, which is a fortification. Yeah, just some some like field works. Yeah, which it's it's blocking terrain, but only on a certain hex size right. and things like that. So, you know, th they've added some nice stuff, but you know, units wise, it's. It's regular yeah. infantry. There's some elites here and there. There's some light infantry. There's light cavalry, some light um, artillery. I, Stuff that you're familiar with if you've played right. things like Napoleonics, for example. Now that we've played it, I, I would like to go back pick a scenario where I have some units like your Grenadier just to see the... But they're super nice. The elite... Uh, Patriot units, what what they do? Those grenadiers were freaking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, and you only had one. I think you had one formation. Yeah, just of them, one. But you can see they're still on the board, they, yeah, which is have hilarious. Them. And you attacked them how many times? Uh, at least five or six. And I, mean, I, I'm I a, did. I rallied them once to yep. get them back to full because they yep. lost two guys. But boy, they, those elite units stick around. And yeah. just If the Highlanders come out, just watch out. So, so I, I maybe we need to go back and play a, 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 a little bit of the more advanced scenario, so we have some more of those units. But yeah, this was fun. It was Freeman's Farm, so it was the Saratoga campaign. Uh, the, the, the British ended up winning. I'll be honest, though. That's one thing. This was Freeman's Farm. Mm -hmm. We've just played Freeman's Farm yeah, yeah. from uh, Worthington. Mm -hmm. This scenario, the victory conditions were half seven flanks, which is kill each it, other. Yeah. I couldn't have no told holding you this was Freeman's Farm at yeah. all. So yeah. Mo the other scenarios do have like actual Something. objectives and bits and pieces in them. Yeah. This one just happens to be just killing each other, frankly. And it uh, felt like, it didn't feel like it was Freeman's fun to me. And, and that's fine. I mean, these games, once again, these games yeah. are light, introductory. It's really, I could play this with my children. Yes. You know, Marin, uh, Jane could care less, which is just so but Jane. But she's old enough where she could do it. She could. If she wanted to. Yeah, and I think Marin at eight, I think she could grasp this. She might lose some of the strategies but i'd love to try you know i've got ancients at home that i that, which would is love to nice try and easy her. that she'd be able to do but yeah so those were kind of the new things the other thing i really liked about this edition was the the dice were printed yes they weren't stickers yep they were i i'm assuming that's printed yeah right? it's, it's a, not embossed I, I couldn't tell you exactly the manufacturing of how they do it but it's it's really they're, nice they're like it's like these are plastic dice with custom printed on them, yeah. but they're not going to scratch off or anything no. like that. I kind of miss the chunky. I do like yeah, the these chunkiness. Are these are a little small. I'd like the chunkiness. But also, but, thank goodness, they gave you enough. Oh, they gave us like eight. I never, which is good. 
which you never roll more than, more than five or six. Yeah. You rolled six a couple of times. I, I rolled seven once as well. Did you roll seven? But you'll never roll more than that. They give you enough dice. Which is so, good. Yeah. I which mean, is good. Some games are like, here's four dice. You roll yeah. them twice. No. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. I don't want to do that either. So that's at least something. <clears throat> uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the board very briefly how some of this works and then we'll wrap you, up you know how command and colors <laughs> yeah or frankly we'll just show you so, some of the extras yeah, yeah and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts so this is a look at the map as you can see it looks like a lot of the old cnc maps um the cards that you take actions with these command cards and on them it's got most of the action things like advance on the left so you're going to issue one order to three units in the left flank and so it's kind of as you're looking at the board and so if you're sat on this side of the board left center right i really hope that's correct the way i'm looking at it um advance in the center three in the center or there's some special ones like bombard all your artillery get to shoot and they shoot at plus uh two dice which is super nice or there's some inspired leadership cards where a leader and then a bunch of adjacent guys in, in a line, they can all activate, and they can do some special bits and pieces. So you'll have a hand of cards, and that's the constraints, right? You can only do what's on the cards that you have. So if you have, like, five cards that all do stuff over here, you're like, I desperately need to save my guys over here. Well, you can't do it. Now, the nice thing in this game, and we talked about it, was these um, combat cards. You have a, a separate hand of these. And they come in a whole separate deck, and you've got a whole bunch of them for the British, for example. And some of these allow you to kind of do extra bits and pieces. So this is kind of ignoring a, a flags if you're next to a leader, or you get a bonus to your rally check. For some of them, it's, I get to shoot back in ranged combat. Normally, you can't do that. Some of them, you play instead of your command card. And this is like, you just get to just shoot everyone in a line. It's a line volley. So everyone in the line who's connected, you just get to all shoot, which is super fun. So some of these cards, or it's like a regular battle bonus. All your regular troops you've activated get plus one die. But some of them allow you to kind of do extra things. So you play this alongside your command card. So my command card works over here because that's all I've got. Well, I can issue at least one order to a unit with a leader anywhere else on the board. So maybe I can save these guys by running them away because they've only got one guy left and they're kind of weak. Or I might make a, you know, a melee attack with this group to try and divert them away from this guy, all whilst I'm doing stuff with my regular command card over here. So the, the battle cards are a really fun addition. It, you know, you, you kind of got two hands of cards, but it's just a neat little deck of extra things that you can do without being super duper complicated or anything like that but it just kind of just changes up how you look at certain situations based on what cards that you have or you're looking at your command cards where suddenly this probe left allows you to do you know a couple guys on the left but at the end you draw the combat card so you might be playing this well i don't necessarily desperately need to do stuff on the left but I do desperately want another combat card. So it, it's just another little extra layer of things to think about. Um, as far as the combat goes, it's very, very similar to what you'd expect. So you've got some regulars here, and we've got some regulars, or some militia and a leader over here. If my regulars were to attack, you just look at the chart, and the chart will tell you that regular infantry, they attack so this is two dice for melee, melee is adjacent, and it's two dice at range one, and one dice at range two. So adjacent, range one, range two. So two dice, two dice, one dice is what we're looking at for those. So I'm just going to chuck two dice at these guys. You roll your bones, and I rolled a hit, and I rolled a flag. So a hit just eliminates a unit, and then a flag would normally make them retreat. However, because they're with a leader, the leader means that they can ignore the flag. So that's kind of very standard for combat. Now, if I was to have rolled two flags, this is where things get really interesting. Instead of losing a guy, let's kind of put him back here, I can ignore one flag because of my leader, but I still have to accept the second flag. And what's nice about this one, and I don't know if this is unique, but I don't really remember it from other ones, different units have different amounts of retreats that they have to do. 
So these militia, they have to retreat three hexes. So it, it can be brutal and crack your lines very heavily if you have to do that. So they're going to move back one, two, three spaces, all the way back here, almost off shot. And then what they're going to do is they're going to make a rally check. So a rally check is based on the number of blocks that you have left. So these guys have four. And they're going to subtract one from their morale rating because they're militia. They're not great. They're not trained army men. But they're going to add one back. So it's a wash because they have a leader. You're just going to chuck four dice. And you're looking for flags. If I roll the flag on my rally, I'm great. I don't run away. If, for example, I had rolled no flags, anything but flags, like this, I would quite literally pick them up and take them off the board, as if they had been killed. They just run away, they break, their morale is done, and the opponent gains a flag. Now, when you're rolling four or five dice like this, that's not, in theory, very likely, because each one of these dice has two flag faces on it, and one of everything else. But, it can happen, and the threat of it happening means you have to pay attention to how you build your lines, which units you put up, who's got good morale, who doesn't. Maybe you're going to hang on to some of these, oh, where they get? some of these um, hold the line cards, so that, um, you know, if you're next to a leader, you can ignore any number of flags, or maybe you're going to hang on to these to help you roll better in a key rally roll. But what it, you know, so it, it, it really changes how you think about some of these games. Also, if you've lost a couple of guys, you're only going to roll two dice. So the more guys that are dead, they're still good. And most of the time, they'll be good. But they just remove off the board, and they're gone. Right? It's, it's, it's a very neat mechanic, but it, it can... He <laughs> totally changed the battlefield. You know, if, if, if a, a unit routes off, suddenly you've got a gap in your line. Suddenly, all these guys that were next to them aren't getting their supporting unit bonuses. And, 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 and it can kind of devolve very quickly if you make a couple bad rolls. But it's Command and Colors, so there is a lot of luck in the card draws and the dice rolling anyway. So it, it's another element of that. But it also changes your perspective of what you're looking at in a battle. And it's interesting. It makes for some very interesting choices. And, you know, it's more dice to chuck, and who doesn't like doing that in a light war game? But basically, that's it. It's moving, fighting, routing units off the board, taking objectives when you need to. Um, it's, it's a very solid game. What we'll do, we'll just wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um... Like I said, command cards, super duper fun. Excellent. Had a great time with that. Um, the the kind of the morale system where you might have a full stack and it might just leave. Yeah. And that happened to us twice in this game. One of well, these... it, 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 it's a cool different element, which I think is very reminiscent of this style of fighting. Yeah. But as a game, I made the comment. It makes it very harsh. It, it makes it even a much more luck-based in many ways, because you, you can't plan for that. Yeah. You know, I had literally entire sections of, of regular, I think it broke at least once or twice. Yeah, yeah I had. Rolling four or five dice, and I couldn't roll a dang flag. Yeah. You know, and that's just part of it. And odds-wise, that's very unlikely. Well, because there's how many flags? There's two on each, flags on each die. So you're on five die, and you're rolling nothing. percent chance on each dice. Yeah. and Or die, and you... Yeah. But I, I think this is a good... I think it's a good representation of this this style of fighting, that Napoleonic, you know, 1700 style of fighting. Formations, line up, shoot some volleys, and yeah, sure, charge once you're done. And yeah, shoot the Send in the cavalry on the flanks. It's fun. I had a good time yeah. with it. It's... Have you ever played a CNC game that you haven't enjoyed? I mean, honestly. Yes. Well, the medieval one, we I don't know that my I... Favorite. But there were some cool elements to yes, it. Yes, I agree with that. Overall, it just wasn't what we expected. Yes. I think that was what My expectations were like here. And, and it, it was, was just like, there. this is a scene. And, and that's our fault. I'll take that on yeah. me. But when you use that term... Anyway, every other CNC game that we've played, Memoir 44, Ancients, Napoleonics... The Great War. I mean, even Battle Lore. Um, 
The yeah. one that is the fantasy the f- one. I, you know that one's cool because it's got cool minis. It's it's it kind of different. Good, that's for sure. People the, love that game. They do. Tim yeah. likes that game. I know. Our our, old, our friend Tim. But um, every time people are like, oh, I love Battle or I'm like, oh, let's play in the Polaris. Yeah, let's just go into like, the Polaris. Yeah. Oh, it's so or good the I swear. Yeah, the Great War is so <laughs> good. The Great War with those tanks and uh, oh, the bombardments. Anyway, I've never played CNC that I haven't really enjoyed it. It's always fun and it's yeah. usually quick. This yes. was on the longer side. Took us almost three hours to play this scenario. And we are slow. But we're, we're terribly slow. Probably this is a two hour one, I imagine. I would agree. normal people. But, yeah. uh, it, you know, I have fun with it. It's enjoyable. Yeah. Well, and isn't that, we all say this, we always say this, isn't that what it's about? Having fun. I think Enjoying so. time with friends. At least and, in this game. Yeah. I know that CNC is about enjoying something, yeah. reading a little bit of history, and just yeah. playing it out for fun. We've talked about, we'd love to go to a, convention and play one of those epic ancients you, you know tom knight one of our friends online he goes all the time to different conventions i'm like come to wbc and let's, I'll, I'll bring my ancients you can bring yeah. your ancients we'll do a a whole table i want to do you know? epic waterloo of napoleon well that would be fun too Ooh. that would be really fun so this is a good one this also once again if you like this period i think this game is is pretty cool yeah it does so. what it's trying to do um, so it's available from Compass. You can get it pretty much anywhere. This is on, on the more expensive side, but it comes in a really thick three-inch box with all the yeah, blocks. Very well made. Which is nice of them to do that. Yeah, the, these little uh, terrain. The Great War has these. Ancients has these, but they're not. Eh, they're similar. They're, they're pretty much all the same. I like the terrain tiles. I think they're cool. That's yeah. a hill. I need to put it back to a forest. Oh. So... <laughs> But yeah, but, uh, I yeah. enjoy these. Have a blast with them. Absolutely. This is another great one. We'll notch it up to another good CNC game. Well, and now that we've played this one, only the only thing we have to play is Battle Cry. Yes. And then we can do our long discussed top Command and Colors. Very, very long discussed ranking yeah. of them. So we need to get Battle Cry done. Yes. And I have Battle Cry. So, so. Though, which we have that. Thanks to a very generous donation. Yes. Thanks to Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw who just mailed it to us, which was awesome. Which, they're the designers of Brave Little Belgium, so plug to them. They gave yeah. us that game. Go buy their game. It's great. And their upcoming <laughs> White Eagle Defiant, which is the invasion of Poland in 1939. Yes. So, but anyway. Good guys, good designers. <laughs> that all aside, <laughs> Kamaz and Color Strike on American Revolution had a blast with this. Another great CNC game. There's so many of them. Pick a theme that you like. And go with But it. if you like Amrev, this is a fun one. Mm-hmm. It's a great way to teach. It's a great way to just play and have fun. And it's short. You can play it yeah. in not a long time, basically. Yeah. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.